fixed. Agel, auditorium, and offices. My main focus is the auditorium. <clears throat> now, the auditorium abstract is what is an auditorium? We all know what an auditorium is, but do we really know what it is? So, there's two main features to look at when you're looking at the auditorium visual sight with the performance and acoustics. Okay? Auditoriums are made to watch performances. There's no point of watching a performance if you can't hear it properly or if you can't see the performance. These are the components required to create a complete auditorium. You can't just have a wall and call it an auditorium. You need a lobby. First of all, your, your clients are not going to enter from outside directly into the auditorium. They're going to come in through a lobby. Inside the lobby is going to be a box office where you buy your tickets or receive the tickets that you've already bought online or however you may have purchased the tickets. Then you have the main house. The main house is the main seating area, the, the public area for the audience. Then you have vomitoriums. Vomitoriums are just like in stadiums where you enter midway through the auditorium over here. So just like you can see here, that's the access way in between the seats. And I'm sure if you guys have been to football games and such, you, you know what I'm talking about. You have the stage, which is obviously the main feature of the auditorium. You have an orchestra pit, which is lowered in front of the auditorium for the orchestra to be hidden but still heard. You have balconies, which don't necessarily have to be incorporated into every auditorium, but it's, it's still there. And balconies are seating areas on the sides. You have boxes which is more of a luxurious, olden-style auditorium thing where it's just directly in front of the stage, it's just a private box. Dressing rooms, which is the backstage area for all of the performers who want to put makeup and dress, and as you know, dressing rooms are required. Green room, it's pretty much a lounge for the performers when they're not performing, a gathering spot. A crossover is the area behind the stage that performers go from one side to the other without being seen. You have a control room, they control the lighting and the sound and they have to have direct visual access with the stage so it's usually on top of the box or below the box. Catwalk, which is above the ceiling and it's where the light control people walk above the ceiling and actually control the spotlights facing the people, uh, the performance, sorry. Trap room, so it's pretty much hollow underneath the stage and it's for performers to disappear. Like um, they lift up the curtain, hide under the trap room and they're gone, it's part of the show, you're amazed. Everyone claps. The ceiling, the ceiling is very important for an auditorium. You don't just have a normal ceiling like we do here. You have to have acoustic panel ceilings, which is going to reverberate the sound evenly across the whole auditorium. And finally, the walls do exactly the same, except they have a different setting. So they're not curved, they're, they're zigzagged along the wall. I think I skipped to <coughs> I got these diagrams from the metric uh, handbook and these are showing the relationships between the stages of the auditorium. Now as you can see I included two because there's no one way of skimming a cat. Okay? There's many ways of organizing your spaces in the auditorium and it's good to understand the different concepts. The main thing is public areas are in one place, stage and viewing areas is another and then backstage areas are hidden. That's to ensure the public stays in one area, audience stays in one area and the performance say another. And it's the same thing over here. You have all of the, the backstage areas and they're all hidden and put together. Another very crucial point of the auditorium is how it reacts with humans, hence the term human-friendly spaces. There's no point of designing an excellent auditorium if you're uncomfortable in there, if one person can see clearly, if the other person can't see clearly. So first we have the relationship of the main house to the stage making sure that every point of the, of the main house has direct access to the stage visually. Then you have the seating fixtures themselves. How high is each step? How high is a person's eye, average person's eye? That's going to be important in noticing if the guy over here can see above this person's head. And these are just general rules to follow because they've already measured the human and if you follow this, you'll be safe. Then you have the actual scheme itself, which is the slope of your main house. Okay. This is important because it's not all going to be the same. You're going to have transverse gangways, which are walkways, and they're different, they're different thicknesses. 
So you have to take that into consideration when designing your auditorium. The further back you go, the higher up you're going to have to go. And finally, something that you would not think when you're thinking of an auditorium is performers and their costumes getting through. Some people that have big hats and you know spears and such, you can't design a doorway that will fit a person but not fit things like a spear or a tall hat. So you have to keep that in mind when you're designing your access to and from the stage. And also keep in mind, I saw a play, it was The Lion King actually, where the performers didn't come out from the stage, they came out from in between us. So they came out from the entrances and auditoriums and made their way up to the stage, which is a good theoretical act and you have to accommodate for that when you design your building. <coughs> Different types of auditoriums. So you have an alley stage, which is pretty much a catwalk for um, fashion shows. One long stage and people on either side. Then you have a black box auditorium, which is pretty much a big black box that the, the tenant uses however they like, or entry chairs however they like, very flexible. You have a central stage, also known as an arena stage, and that's where you're surrounded completely for concerts and you know, performances of that sort, where every angle is crucial. Environmental theatre is where the auditorium itself is part of the act. So if it's a haunted house, the auditorium looks like a haunted house. You have a proscenium stage, which is our main one, and proscenium means picture frame, and it's because of the defining picture frame over here that we get the name from. We're looking at the performance through a picture frame. A recital hall, which is also very similar to a shoebox concert hall, which is made just for listening to music, and it's straight with seats going straight and on the sides only. A showroom, which is pretty much a showroom inside of a casino or a restaurant. So it's not an auditorium on its own, it's a performance area inside a restaurant. Then you have a thrust stage, which is you're surrounded by three sides and the stage comes in about halfway. These are important to know when you design the auditorium as to which direction you want to go in. In our case, we're going in the proscenium stage as it's a typical kind of auditorium. Now for the design. <coughs> These are some of the concept sketches that I created back when second semester, I believe. And some of these are derived from inspirations, as you can see, and some of them are just sketches of my own mind. And I was trying to get out as much as I can of what our building could possibly look like following all of the regulations. Now, I actually ended up going with this one, and this was my main concept for uh, our design. Now, if I go back here, as you notice, this is one big building, this is two small buildings, this is a small building. My concept was to have multiple buildings on our site and each building was going to have a purpose and that was to bring unity amongst auditorium and office and art gallery but I couldn't achieve that so I had to have one complete building however I still did divide three towers along the building <coughs> after the sketches I took those sketches I jumped into Revit and I created some massing models now uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with massing models but it's very flexible click and drag pieces to get the shape you want Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, you get a lot of different options. And these are narrowed down from about 50 different options. The good thing is you can actually analyze these and see how they'll work with lighting, how they'll work with um, solar energy and all that. This one here is the main one I decided to go with, and I was going to convert this one into my building. Design floor plans. We start off with the survey plan, which is Simply the plan we get from the surveyor, I haven't touched it, I haven't done anything to it. Now, lucky for me, I had already done the site analysis plan, so I already understand everything that's going on. I know where the slope is, I know where the services are. This is purely for me to place my site on, which is what I've done here. By the way, it's a really big file, so it will lag loading up some files, such as my drawings. Hopefully that will disappear. This is my site plan slash roof plan. Now I know I haven't showed you guys my building yet, so you might not be knowing what you are looking at. But I just want to emphasize this is my entrance to my, my uh, building, entrance to the car park and loading dock. I've kept that to one area where Station Street is. So you just come in and out over here. This is my public open area, and I've chosen it here because this place gets the most sunlight 
at the whole site after the building is in place. If I, if I placed it here, it will be interfering with the access to the station. And if I placed it here, after the afternoon, it will be dark and cold. Then you have our context plan with my building on it, just to show the relation of my building to Delilah Road, M2, and Epping Road. And thanks to Fadi, I wasn't going to have this, but he looked at my drawings and said, I don't know what, what's around your site, even though I had already spoken about it before. It's hard to tell when you're looking at my drawings where my building sits. So it's very clear over here where my road is compared to where the neighbouring buildings are, where the station is, and where the M2 is. <coughs> then you have my basement plan. I don't want to focus too much on this plan because it's, it's in 2D and I've got a 3D one coming up, but I want to mention that I've got three fire stairs side by uh, elevators or lifts. <coughs> I have roughly 300 parking spaces per level, including 8 disabled parking spaces. This is what I wanted to focus on. This is a 3D cutaway of my plan. And you might notice, okay, these are columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, but what are all of these things that are sticking out every parking spot? Those are electric car charging units. <coughs> and the thing with this is, we're talking about BIM, that's an actual BIM model. That's plugged into Revit and that'll give you um, electricity, you can plug it into a circuit, you can actually have that running in your Revit file. And that's part of the DCP to include one of these for every parking spot. Future advancing, electric cars are becoming a thing, you have to accommodate for that. Then you have my ground floor plan. My ground floor to fifth to fourth floor, sorry, focuses on the auditorium. So backstage rooms, um, box office, bars, all dedicated to the auditorium. Over here we have backstage rooms and the administrative backstage rooms. So offices for the administrators, you know, people who are hiring, firing performers, they need offices to do that, and that's over here. This is my loading dock and the receiving area directly from the loading dock for the auditorium. As you know, auditorium will be receiving the most things like scenes and parts of the props of the performance. Over here you have my uh, box office area and secret receiving area. These are my bathrooms, combined male and female, side by side. I won't talk about the colours yet. I'll talk about them in a, in a coming uh, plan, just because this one doesn't highlight yet what I want to show. That's my 3D plan of the ground floor. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time, but this area here was designated to have bars, cafes and such for the auditorium. And uh, I didn't want to start and have a poor result, so I thought I'd dig it up. This is first floor, pretty much same as the ground floor, except you have more uh, backstage areas, so changing rooms, um, prop workshops, storage for costumes, fixing places for costumes, and I've changed up my male female bathroom just to give it a bit of a different design. And over here, I've added some balconies because my building is not perfectly straight, so I make use of the jumping levels. This is where it lags. 